Well, I found Blitzkrieg in a German military journal from 1939, so I guess we need to talk about it again. Many years ago, I made a video that the German military didn't use the term Blitzkrieg. Back then, I mostly relied on secondary literature and had only very limited experience with original German military writings from the 1930s and 40s. Well, thanks to my generous Patreon and subscribers and supporters, this has changed. I have made several trips into the German military archives and also bought a lot of original sources myself, as you can see here. While reading these books, I came more and more aware that Blitzkrieg, although used rarely, was mainly used to describe a short war and clearly not as an official military or doctrinal term. At the same time, one word was almost constantly spammed and one might get the impression that the German officers were a bit obsessed with that word. And that word was rather similar to Blitzkrieg. It was Bewegungskrieg, War of Movement. So let us look at what the Germans wrote about Bewegungskrieg and Blitzkrieg before and during the war. Big thank you here to Dr. Roman Töppel who provided me with some of his findings for this video. Initially I put down a post-it every time I read Bewegungskrieg, but then I stopped because it was so common. Similarly, I kept my eyes open for the word Blitzkrieg as well, and while I ran into Bewegungskrieg several dozen of times, I only ran into Blitzkrieg once. So let us take a look at the various findings and see what we can learn from them. Although I found the terms in various publications, I will quote here mostly out of two. Both are what I call highly official, which I will shortly explain. The first is the Militärwissenschaftliche Rundschau, Military Scientific Review from 1937 to 1944, of which I have a complete set thanks to my supporters. You know, some people collect Pokemons, other stamps, meanwhile I collect articles about Bewegungskrieg. The second source is the Handbuch der Neuzeitlichen Wehrwissenschaften, Handbook of Modern Military Science. So why do I consider them both highly official? Well, the Militärwissenschaftliche Rundschau was originally published by the Reichskriegsministerium, the Ministry of War. After it was disbanded, the publication was continued by the general staff of the army and later on by the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, the high command of the armed forces. In short, it was published by the highest echelon of the German military from 1937 to 1944, when it was ultimately discontinued. Meanwhile, the handbook was only published by a former general, yet each individual handbook had a foreword by the Minister of War or the respective commander of each of the branches covered, so the German Army, Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe. So this also can be considered quite official. Now reading those various articles and entry, it becomes apparent that the German military writers had a particularly feeling about Bewegungskrieg, War of Movement and its opposite Stellungskrieg, Positional War, which trench warfare is basically a subset of. First, they hated Stellungskrieg, Positional Warfare, which they saw as the opposite to Bewegungskrieg, War of Movement. Second, Bewegungskrieg was not something new. They referred to Frederick the Great and historical examples in the articles as well, which contradicts the statement of some that claim that the Germans invented something new in the interwar years. We will now examine several of those points and they are fixated on Bewegung, on movement, what they considered the main part of operations. But let us let the sources do the talking. Let's start with the obsession with movement. In an article from 1937 that argues against panzer divisions, it is noted, only from movement emerges victory. To make it possible is therefore the top priority of all measures of leadership. The movement carries the fire in the necessary concentration to the decisive points of the battle, in order to indulge in victory with the destruction of the enemy as the final goal. This is completely in line with the statements of the German military historian Groß, who noted that the Germans in both world wars tried to find the solution in movement. Another article from 1936 contrasts Bewegungs- and Stellungskrieg. It is already hinted at that positional warfare is seen as a lesser form of warfare and that war of movement is the ultimate art. The field of operations is therefore the war of movement. Whoever masters its difficult procedure will always be superior to an opponent who proceeds according to other points of view. 
unless Delara is able to limit himself to pure defense and it comes to positional warfare. This, however, is the death of all operations, or at least means they're falling asleep, from which they can generally only be revived through tactical victory. Yet later on, this dismissal, or probably better contempt for positional war, becomes far more apparent. The historical component is also covered in regard to the First World War. The Stellungskrieg is also mentioned. In the positional warfare, it became clear that the forces of the struggling opponents had reached a balance. The more time remained to enforce the positions in the terrain and the more the possibility dwindled of quickly and deeply penetrating the enemy's flank and rear through new operations with strong forces, the less chance there was of escaping from the stalemate of positional warfare, which soon took on the form of fortress warfare. In regard to the situation in 1918, it is noted, the strategy was replaced by violent blows of mass and material. Now this clearly shows the dismissal of positional warfare as a dignified form of war. Early on in the article, strategy is noted to be equivalent to Kriegskunst, the art of war. In other words, positional warfare is a simple brawl. Furthermore, the term Bewegungskrieg was also used in the First World War as well. Thanks to Jesse from the Real Time History Channel to look up the German original for a quote he used in the Verdun video. The negative view on positional warfare is even more pronounced in other parts. A section is titled Indecisive Warfare and Positional Warfare, Entscheidungslose Kriegsführung und Stellungskrieg. Here it is noted what is the duty of the commander. The commander's task is to win and destroy the enemy. Any warfare that lacks this goal is to be regarded as a degeneration of war, which by its very nature urges a complete, rapid and final decision. Nevertheless, we must also deal with such warfare here, because it all too often plays a role in reality. So positional warfare is considered a degeneration of war. Later on, there is also a reference to Frederick the Great. Particularly that the fortified camps, befestigte Feldlager, were a form of Stellungskrieg of his time. The then quote Frederick's general principles, where he states that they are useless, dass sie nichts taugen. Considering this outright fetish with movement, it is a bit odd that Blitzkrieg, although sounding better, was considered so long as a standard term in serious literature, sometimes even in German historiography. But what about Blitzkrieg? Did the Germans ever use the term? The short answer is yes, they did. But it was not used as a doctrinal term like Bewegungskrieg or even the dreaded Stellungskrieg. Here Dr. Roman Töppel provided me with several examples. The first one is from a channel to his wife. It is particularly interesting since it was written before the battle in France in 1940. This decisive battle against England, France, Belgium and Holland cannot be a blitzkrieg. But God's blessing will rest on the work of the army of a hundred thousand men for which the young German Wehrmacht could be created. The next is a quote from the chief of the channel's staff, War Diary. It takes 32 to 38 days from the day the border is crossed to the start of the attack on Gibraltar. That is a long time and really no longer a blitzkrieg. But the harsh demands of stealth led to this loss of time. Similarly, according to one source, Hitler mentioned the term in a talk with the Italian foreign minister in 1940 as well. The Hungarians believed that they could defeat Romania with a kind of blitzkrieg. In view of Hungary's level of armament, however, he, the Führer, was of the opinion that such a blitzkrieg was an experiment that should be fought twice before embarking on it. Yet there is also another source that notes that Hitler in 1941 said, I never use the word Blitzkrieg because it's a completely stupid word. Meanwhile, General Guderian in his post-war memoirs, which have various errors in them, note that in his opinion the term originated from Germany's enemies. After the initial successes of rapid strikes at the beginning of the Second World War, our opponents therefore spoke of Blitzkriegs. As you can see, the term was used by the German professionals during the wartime as well, and to describe a short war, it was not an official, let alone doctrinal term. So the term Blitzkrieg, Doctrine, Tactics or Strategy are hogwash. Or as I recently stated, 
it's called Bewegungskrieg, although peasants call it Blitzkrieg. This is also in line with research done by others, for instance Robert Citino. To quote, the world would call it Blitzkrieg, although the Germans themselves did not invent or use the term in any official way. Yet let us now go back to the Militärwissenschaftliche Rundschau. Here I found Blitzkrieg, mentioned one time. Maybe it appears more often, but I haven't read the complete set yet. The quote is very interesting since it contains Bewegung, Movement and directly links it to Blitzkrieg. Although putting it under quotation marks, thus implying that it is a non-technical term. The quote requires some context. It is from late 1939 about the Soviet Union. It was published after Poland was defeated and when Germany and Soviet Russia were cooperating at the time. Today the state Soviet Russia, which with all its military potential expects a war of long duration, is associated with the state Germany, whose strength has always been rapid and surprising movement. The Blitzkrieg. This is also in line with what Zitino noted in the German way of war. Clearly, the Germans did not invent something called Blitzkrieg in the 1920s and early 1930s. Rather, Prussia and Germany had been trying to keep their wars short since the days of the Great Elector and Frederick the Great. To summarize, although the German military used the term Blitzkrieg a few times, it was in a non-doctrinal manner. Additionally, compared to Bewegungskrieg, War of Movement, which was clearly a doctrinal term, it was rarely used. Bewegungskrieg was also what was the kind of war the German military aimed for. This becomes particularly apparent when we see what is written about its opposite, the dreaded Stellungskrieg positional war, which in one case is called a degenerate form of war. Ironically, the quote from 1939 that I found seems to connect Bewegung and Blitzkrieg. Yet as far as I know, no one else has used that particular quote before since those few authors that looked into this topic mostly used the Militär Wochenblatt, not to mention that it is a rather obscure article to find Blitzkrieg in the first place. Then again, I might have missed something. Big thank you to Dr. Roman Töppel for providing valuable insights and quotes from his research. Thank you to Andrew for reviewing the script. Thank you for watching and see you next time.